streetcar operation began in Washington, D.C. in 1862 with horse-drawn rail cars that ran from the Capitol to the State Department. The horses were changed every four hours, but the men were scheduled to work seven days a week for 16 hours, except on Sundays when they only worked 15 hours. As one transit executive put it, horses cost money. The operators worked in open vestibules and were exposed to the cold and rain. The first electric streetcar service in the District of Columbia is shown here on opening day at 7th and New York Avenue Northwest in 1888. However, this development did not make things better for the operators. Faster streetcar meant hypothermia came quicker and many suffered frostbite and a few died. Shown here are crowded streetcars with open vestibule at 7th and G Northwest. Organizing a union was difficult in the early period of electric streetcars because more than a dozen different companies were providing service. This film clip shows an electric streetcar delivering mail in 1903 on Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest. Company owners also used the threat of federal prosecution for interfering with the U.S. mail against union organizing efforts. Nevertheless, streetcar operators and conductors were able to persuade Congress to pass a law mandating closed festival for streetcars in the district in 1903. This photo shows an enclosed vestibule vehicle at the Georgetown plow pit. And this photo shows an unusually long streetcar with enclosed vestibule at 15th and Benning Road Northeast. Here's another with an operator and conductor closed vestibule at an unknown location. Union organizing began in earnest in 1915 when the ATU International dispatched Ray's and Orr to assist. The charter was granted to Division 689 of the Amalgamated Association of Street and Electric Railway Employees in January of 1916. A strike was called in March after both the Capital Traction Company and the Washington Street and Electric Railway Companies fired representatives of the union. Famed labor leader Mother Jones addressed the strikers and after three days the company settled agreeing to a binding arbitration. J. H. Coleman became the first business agent of a local 689 shown here in 1917. The Washington Railway denounced union recognition in 1917 and the local struck again. This time the strike failed and that company wasn't organized until it was merged with Capital Transit in 1933. The last surviving original member of Local 689 died at the age of 107 in 2001. Preston Williams began as a conductor on horse cars for the old Capital Traction Company in 1916, later working as an electric streetcar operator and a bus operator before retiring in 1959. He collected his Local 689 negotiated pension for 42 years. The members who founded our union have all passed on now and we know little about them. But their words still live on in our contract book, as there are large sections of original language still in place guiding labor relations between the Transit Authority and our union, Amalgamated Transit Union, Local 689.